When thinking about the vast array of jobs and classes associated with the fantasy role-playing genre, it's easy to be drawn to the classics. And by that, we mean knights and magicians. These two classifications of warrior have been romanticised for as long as stories have been told, with prominent examples seen throughout mythological tales passed down through the centuries and in more recent works of fiction. Due to the prominence of these two archetypes, it's often easy to forget that many others have existed, and one of the more intriguing is the thief or the rogue. Not quite as glamorous as the guttural knight or the brazen mage, thieves have often taken the back seat, skulking around due to their perceived cowardice. But it's those distinctive traits that transitioned so well to the realm of role-playing games, as they allow players to live to fight another day, all while pilfering spoils to improve the party's odds of success throughout the campaign. And it's those distinctive traits that we're going to run through today, as we hope to take you on an expansive journey that explores the path thieves have taken throughout the Final Fantasy franchise following their introduction back in 1987. It's well documented that the original Final Fantasy used Dungeons & Dragons as a source of inspiration, as Aki Toshikawazu had become obsessed with tabletop gaming and early role-playing games like Ultima. Based on this, the appearance of a thief in Final Fantasy was unsurprising, as it had been introduced within the Greyhawk Supplemental in 1975, upgraded to being a standard character class within the original player's handbook. Here, we got to see an array of abilities introduced, including the ability to open locks, remove traps, pick pockets, strike silently from behind, and move with a high degree of stealth. They could also understand treasure maps, allowing them to find treasures that their contemporaries could not. In terms of combat application, thieves were given low attack than other melee classes, able to use daggers with a high degree of proficiency, but their dexterity would be incredibly high to counterbalance. They would also be able to wear light armour with no shields to defend themselves, as they just weren't perceived to be strong enough. Even though many of these traits would not be seen within the original Final Fantasy, due to how many gameplay constraints there were, the core tenants were still present. Appearing as a starter job, thieves would be able to use daggers as a primary weapon, although they could use some swords and katanas. And the armour they could wield, which in-game was displayed with a lovely brown colour, was restricted to only certain items that were perceived to be quite light in terms of their weight. The main benefit of the thief therefore came from how gameplay was affected by the heavy focus placed around their agility and their luck attributes. These stats would be crucial in helping to differentiate thieves from warriors and monks, as they would help to influence passive traits such as the turn order at the start of battles and within subsequent turns, as well as increasing the percentage chance of the flea command being successful. In spite of this, thieves were often inferior damage dealers, and it wouldn't be until the mid-game job upgrade happened, which would see them turn into ninjas, that the utility would finally improve. Thieves returned in Final Fantasy III, but this time they were no longer a starter job. Acquired via the Fire Crystal, these were now restricted to only using daggers as their melee weapon, but they were given access to a small array of throwing weapons. Their equipment restrictions were also maintained, although this time the sprite had its primary colour changed to green with brown accents and a bandana was added. With jobs now given specific commands, as opposed to their gameplay being primarily focused around attributes in isolation, it's all thieves have two prominent parts of their long-term toolkit added, steal and escape. The latter command formalised what was seen within the original Final Fantasy, and made it much more powerful, as it gave thieves the ability to have the entire party escape from random encounters with a 100% success rate, making it much more useful than the typical run command. The second ability, steal, would allow thieves to pilfer specific items from enemies. This would allow the party to not only acquire rare items, especially as the thief job level increased, but it would also help them to save a significant amount of gil. In spite of these new commands, attributes were still important too, and thieves were again associated with high agility. Although this would grant numerous bonuses in combat, the main two were related to accuracy and evasion. Final Fantasy IV would see jobs aligned with specific named characters. But in spite of the thief appearing within the first and third iterations of the franchise, none of the characters were associated with the job. That's not to say certain traits were not present though, as Edge, who was classified as the ninja, did exhibit some classic thief traits, some that should have not been too surprising given the relationship between the two jobs. Edge would have katanas as a primary weapon type, but could also equip daggers and use boomerangs, one of the throwing weapons used by thieves in the previous game. On top of this, Edge could also use claws, but armour was restricted to only light garments and no shields could be equipped outside of the hero's shield. There was no visual association between Edge and the previous versions of the Thief, but the main element that signified Edge's hybrid role was his ability to use the Steel command. 
Much like in Final Fantasy III, this would allow Edge to steal items from monsters, with its chance increasing along with Edge's level in relation to the target's level. But there was an interesting evolution too, as if the steal failed, Edge would take damage. In Final Fantasy V, the thief was once again positioned as a starter job, this time obtained from the Wind Crystal. Just as in Final Fantasy III, thieves could use daggers in isolation as their melee weapon, with boomerangs used as throwing weapons. They also retained a primarily green outfit, except Faris, whose outfit was closer to brown, with each of the party members also wearing a bandana of some sort. Compared to every other job, thieves would have a huge bonus to their agility attribute, something that due to the advent of the active time battle system, which now had visible bars, would allow them to outpace equivalent jobs and perform more turns per battle. This, alongside an improved set of commands and support abilities, allowed thieves to provide quite a lot of utility, and it was within this particular game that we would start to see elements found within Dungeons & Dragons become more pronounced. Within the established toolkit, thieves could again use steel, but there were some curious deviations as its success rate was now fixed to 40% as opposed to increasing with job or character level, and this could be increased by equipping the thief's glove. In addition to steel, thieves could also use mug. It had the same basic functionality, allowing the player to steal an item or piece of equipment, but it acted as something of an upgrade, allowing the player to deal damage at the same time as stealing. The other basic command available to thieves was flee, another name for escape, but where the interesting evolutions came were with the support abilities. These would give thieves the ability to find hidden passages, which would more often than not contain hidden treasures. They could also move twice as fast around the map as characters using other jobs, and within the battle scene, they could be used to prevent back attacks from happening. All things considered, it meant Final Fantasy V was where we got to see the first fleshed out thief, and there were some real positive points to having one within the party setup. Final Fantasy VI represented the first instance of a canonical thief appearing within the party, as even though Locke Cole was technically an adventurer or treasure hunter, in reality, he was a thief. From a visual perspective, even though the colour palette wasn't the same as Final Fantasy 3 or 5, Locke did still wear a similar garb, complete with bandana. But it was via gameplay elements that the thief association was clearest. Locke had a primary focus on daggers, but could use swords like in the original Final Fantasy, and he had access to an extended array of throwing weapons to deal damage from the back row. Locke also had high evasion and speed attributes. Outside of that, Locke's abilities developed one side of what we had seen within Final Fantasy 3 and 5, but neglected the other side. It would see Locke able to steal, with the success rate matching the implementation used by Edge in Final Fantasy 4, where the success rate depended on the difference between Locke's level and the target's level. This could then be doubled, as in Final Fantasy 5, by equipping an accessory, this time the Thief's Bracer. Another accessory, the Brigand's Glove, would turn Steel into the Mug command, and this could then be pushed even further by equipping either the Genji Glove or the Master's Scroll, which would allow Locke to steal or mug multiple times in succession. The role of the Thief in Final Fantasy VII was similar to what had been seen within Final Fantasy IV, and that was because Yuffie Kisaragi was positioned more as a ninja than as a thief. But that's not to say that many thief traits weren't present, as even from a narrative perspective, Yuffie was more concerned with stealing materia than she was with improving her ninjutsu. Outside of that, Yuffie had exclusive alignment with throwing weapons, many of which have been associated with thieves in the past, such as the Boomerang, Rising Sun, Hawkeye, and the Moonring Blade. She also wore green, but sported a headband as opposed to a bandana, and had dexterity and luck attributes boosted, just like thieves in the original game. The other interesting element was that whenever Yuffie joined the party, she would come equipped with the steel materia. So even though Yuffie was technically a ninja, she was more akin to being a thief ninja hybrid. As the next job based Final Fantasy experience, Final Fantasy Tactics had Thief as one of the earliest jobs that could be obtained, and due to the tactical nature of the gameplay, it would see some very curious evolutions. Focusing first on the more traditional elements, thieves were a combination of green and brown garbs, depending on the gender of the character, with each wearing some sort of bandana. Thieves also had incredible speed, only bested by ninjas, which was coupled with very high evasion. But where they really shone was through their steel ability. Unlike previous games where the steel command was often one-dimensional, allowing players access to items that enemies were carrying, within Tactics, the steel command was expanded to be an array of abilities that targeted specific aspects. For example, the initial still variant would allow players to pill for gill, with the character's level and speed attributes determining how much gill was stolen. This was then complemented by the ability to steal individual pieces of armor, weaponry and accessories, as well as experience points and even the opponent's heart, leading them to become affected by the charm status effect. 
Further to this, thieves also had some unique passives, one called Guild Snapper, which would enable them to earn money equal to the amount of damage they had received, and another called Poach, which would allow them to deliver the carcasses of slain monsters to the poacher's den for a reward. Even though Final Fantasy VI had featured a canonical thief, Final Fantasy IX thrust the role further into the spotlight as it was the job associated with Zidane Tribal, the game's main protagonist. What we saw was a faithful interpretation of the job, which was pulled from numerous sources, however, despite this additional focus, there was limited evolution. Even though Zidane didn't wear a bandana, his outfit had a lot of focus on blue hues much like Lock Cole, and the materials were lightweight. From an offensive perspective, Zidane could wield daggers, but there was also a second weapon type, Thief Swords, a purposeful distinction in comparison to the previous thieves, including Locke, who could use swords. The other curious aspect was that Zidane would wield two daggers as opposed to one, with the Thief Swords also having two blades. Compared to the rest of the cast, Zidane had a strong emphasis on speed, something which allowed him to have a shorter duration between turns, and this was very useful as for some turns, players would want to have Zidane use his innate steal ability. This would allow Zidane to steal items and equipment from enemies, and it could be augmented with support abilities such as Steel Gill, Master Thief and Bandit, which enhanced the steal rate, and Mug. In addition, Zidane also had access to a skill called Thievery, which would deal more damage based on the number of times Zidane had successfully stolen throughout the game. Zidane could also use Flea, but this time there was a penalty attached, as the player would lose 10% of the gill they would have earned from winning the encounter. The interpretation of Thief in Final Fantasy X would end up being quite similar to what was seen within Final Fantasy IV and VII, as although there was not a canonical Thief, Riku did still exhibit some traits. It would see her focus on claw weapons, something that Edge also had access to, with a strong focus placed around agility as an early stat that was boosted within her section of the sphere grid. But perhaps the biggest association was that Steel and Mug were also within her section of the sphere grid. Unlike previous games, within Final Fantasy X, the first use of steel would always succeed, with the chance of success halving with each subsequent steel. It could also be used to dismantle Machina. But that was where the association ended, with the steel command used by Riku to amass items that would ultimately be used for mixing. The notion of Riku being a thief, however, was cemented a bit further within X2, as her default garb, used in all promotional assets, was that of Riku when using the Thief Dress Sphere. Alongside Yuna and Pain, when equipping the Thief Dress Sphere, each would wield daggers, and they would gain access to Steel and Flea abilities. The Thief Dress Sphere was also equipped by Riku by default within Last Mission, and it would come with a few alternative abilities, such as Find Trap, that would reveal traps in the room, a neat throwback to Dungeons and Dragons, as well as Gill for damage, an ode to Gill Snapper, and Shoplift, that would allow for the stealing of items when inside a shop. Final Fantasy XI saw Thief return to its roots as a starter job within the original version of the game that launched in 2002, and what we saw was both faithful and revolutionary. Thieves were described as covert operatives, using their stealth and nimbleness to deal huge amounts of damage, while also escaping with plenty of spoils. Even though thieves could use a wide array of weapons, the largest to date, their primary affinity was with daggers. They would also have stellar evasion skills, with their parrying also of a high standard. This would then be pushed further by the use of abilities such as Perfect Dodge that would allow thieves to evade all melee attacks for a specific period of time, and Hide, which made thieves invisible, removing enmity associated with sight. Thieves would also gain passive bonuses related to evasion, but further to this, there would also be numerous traits related to treasure hunting and damage dealing, and these would harken back to Dungeons and Dragons. Outside of the basic functions of Steel and Mog, which were pretty ingrained within the Thief toolkit by this point, the biggest evolution here was that thieves could now deal additional damage by making use of their stealth. Sneak Attack, for example, would see thieves deal critical damage by striking an enemy from behind, a direct reference back to Dungeons & Dragons, while Trick Attack would see them deal extra damage if they were striking from behind someone else who was in the same party or alliance. Thieves also had a version of Flea that combined with what was seen within Final Fantasy V by giving them a huge increase in movement speed, and they also had unique variants of steel that could, for example, steal enmity from a party member to redistribute the hate, as well as inflicting status ailments. Perhaps the most curious though would be Larsenero, which would actually steal a positive status from the target. With numerous weapon skills added such as Shark Bite, the ability for thieves to dual wield appearing as a standard thing, and the AF armor serving as a modernized variant of the traditional thief garb, it meant that with everything combined, 
This particular iteration of the thief was incredibly comprehensive, and it meant they would become a staple of many party setups, especially within the earlier days of Final Fantasy XI's existence. Within Tactics Advance, unlike the original Tactics, these were made available as a basic starter job. They were, however, only made available to Humes and Moogles. Within this iteration, which saw the green colour scheme return for male characters and a purple colour scheme now adopted for female characters, Speed was gained the attribute of focus and knives, an equivalent to daggers, were the sole weapon of use. Abilities were also almost identical to tactics, with steel featuring numerous variants that involved stealing equipment, weapons, accessories and gill, but it was now expanded to include the stealing of judge points and even certain abilities. Much of this then remained the same for Tactics A2, but the number of steel variants was decreased, replaced by numerous forms of the more traditional steel. The thief job would next appear in Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo's Dungeon, and it could be acquired by stealing the thief's memories from Mog. When used, thief would feature a wide variety of abilities, including steel, mug, flea and pill for gill, but beyond that, the thief could also use artful move to increase movement speed for a period of time, use treasure hunt to increase drop rates, and use alert to identify hidden enemies, traps, and items. In similar fashion to many other games that had aligned jobs to named characters, Revenant Wings did not have a de facto thief. It did, however, have a hybrid thief in Vaughn. Although he used swords as opposed to daggers, the main association was that Vaughn had access to the steel ability, and much like in the Tactics franchise, where steel had its application expanded outside of stealing items and equipment, within Revenant Wings, Vaughn could steal attributes of his enemies to enhance his own. When developing the intriguing crown system for the Four Heroes of Light, the game designers decided to have some fun. It meant some well-recognised jobs would be included as expected, and others like Monk would feature an odd twist. It meant Thief did not even appear amongst the roster, at least in terms of name, as it was reborn as the Bandit. And what we saw, outside of a few quirks, was actually quite faithful, but also a bit progressive. Bandits had access to four abilities, and three of them related to stealing. The default version would act as expected, but Plunder would represent a slight evolution, as it allowed the player to steal from all foes at the same time. Pillage would then fulfil a similar function to enhance steals of the past, as it would provide a guaranteed steal. Final Fantasy Dimensions would then adopt a similar approach, drawing from the past to provide a faithful interpretation of the thief. Available from the start of the game, thieves could steal money and items, while also using Mug to deal damage at the same time. They would also have access to Item Finder and Treasure Hunter that increased the likelihood of finding rare drops, and Flea. But there was also a pretty neat throwback to Final Fantasy V, as thieves had access to Vigilance, which prevented sneak attacks and back attacks. Ever since its debut in 2010, Final Fantasy XIV has continued to evolve as a destination for all things Final Fantasy past and present. As such, many venerable jobs have been recreated, often with some unique twists to help keep things interesting. But even though room has been made amongst the roster for Warrior, Monk, White Mage, Black Mage and Red Mage, Thief has been notably absent. That's not to say the notion of Thief is not present within XIV however, it's more that its name has been changed and its status has been comparatively relegated. Unlike the aforementioned five jobs from the original Final Fantasy, which retained their names and received elevated status, Thief was renamed to Rogue and positioned as a disciple of war class that would evolve into the Ninja job. This would act as a complete reprisal of the role of ninjas within the original Final Fantasy, and many of the traits from the 8-bit and 16-bit era were brought forward. Rogues would have a strong affinity with daggers, and the dexterity attribute would be aligned with their damage dealing capabilities. Much like in Final Fantasy XI, they would also dual wield their weapons, and their outfit was reminiscent of older entries, featuring a prominent green colour palette and a bandana. As it was only a class, as opposed to a job, the rogue toolkit was quite minimal, but there were still a few odes to the past. It would see actions such as trick attack and mark return, with a few dagger skills from Final Fantasy XI brought forward, such as Aeolian Edge and Gust Slash, even if none of them were exclusive to Thief within the previous iteration. Rogues would also have access to Fleet of Foot, which increased their movement speed, Hide, which reduced the chance of receiving aggro, and Feint, which instead of decreasing evasion, decreased the target's damage output. Jobs featured as a prominent part of Final Fantasy Type Zero's game design, with many members of Class Zero using them as a base for their combat styles. But outside of that, the Cranberry Knights, a group of 13 Moogles who served as representatives for each of the classes, each also had jobs, and it was here that we saw the Thief. 
Z was the Mughal representative of Class 8, but instead of the more nefarious association with thieves and their pilfering ways, Z was described as chivalrous, as they were responsible for obtaining knowing tags. They also adopted a design that was somewhat reminiscent of the Four Heroes of Light, as they wore a mask. Much like in Dimensions, Thief appeared as a basic starter job within Final Fantasy Airborne Brigade, and within its moveset were numerous odes. It would see Shark Bite and Sneak Attack appear as abilities, with accuracy also boosted, and the default outfit was pure green featuring a bandana. Thief next appeared within Bravely Default, where it could be obtained via a side quest within Chapter 1. Its command was called Thievery, perhaps a reference back to Zidane from Final Fantasy IX, and they had a strong affinity with daggers and bows, as well as the dexterity and agility attributes being boosted. Within their command set, thieves had access to steel and mug, as well as enhanced steel such as Rob Blind, which allowed for double steel and shakedown, which granted a chance to steal from all enemies. But there were also some interesting additions. Life Feath, for example, functioned in a similar fashion to Drain, allowing thieves to steal health that was equivalent to the damage dealt, and Burglar and Bluff would raise physical attack upon a successful steal happening. Bravely Second then featured a similar set of abilities, but Life Thief, which was renamed to Steel Breath, was complemented by Steel Mind, which allowed them to recover MP. Bravely Default 2 then took things further, adding Steel Courage, which stole BP from the target, and Rest in Peace, a very unique move that allowed thieves to attack sleeping targets without waking them up. Final Fantasy Explorers had thieves as one of the earliest jobs that could be acquired. They could use daggers and spears, with dual daggers, bows and knuckles equipable after the job had been mastered. These weapon affinities were then accompanied by high proficiency with the evasion, mobility and accuracy attributes. Thieves also had two specific abilities, but there was no significant evolution. Clear eyes increased the chance of finding rare materials in the field, while steel offered players a chance to steal items from enemies. Mobius Final Fantasy featured a comprehensive array of jobs, with many featuring numerous iterations, but the Thief was not developed in any significant manner. Added as a form of ranger job, Thief could be upgraded to Bandit and Trickster, but it had no specific abilities or enhancements that were traditional to the Thief toolkit, except its ultimate ability, Trick Attack, which struck from an unexpected angle, something that actually made it more akin to Sneak Attack. The same could not be said for Brave Exvius, which, much like Record Keeper, featured numerous characters who were associated with the Thief job. Helena, for example, would have a strong synergy with the Thief job, but other characters such as Riley, Winkle, Jake and Mercedes would all have innate abilities within their set that drew from what would be expected from Thieves. Prominent examples would be Escape, Treasure Hunter, Hide and Mug. Often characters would have just one or two of these abilities, except in the case of Helena, who would have many, many abilities, even expanded to include Pilfer, Throw and Ace Adventurer, which enabled the dual wielding of certain weapons, such as daggers and throwing weapons. As its successor, a similar approach was taken for War of the Visions. Here, numerous characters had Thief as a sub-job, but there were a handful that had Thief as the main, including Vistrale and Mia. But the implementation was quite intriguing, as it drew from what was established within the Tactics sub-franchise, allowing characters to steal things like Vision and Hard, something that would lead to an enemy being charmed. Further to this, Sneak Attack made a reappearance, with the implementation taking direct inspiration from Final Fantasy XI. The most recent iteration of the Thief was seen within Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Thief could be unlocked after progressing the Duelist and Pugilist jobs to the appropriate level, and it could exclusively use daggers and knuckles. Outside of that, the job wasn't too comprehensive, but the main ability did pay specific reference back to Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, as Jack could use it to steal instant abilities from enemies. Taking everything into consideration, the Thief has had what feels to be quite a limited journey, and especially in modern times, its star has fallen in comparison to say the White Mage, Black Mage and Monk. That's not to say that there hasn't been plenty of evolution though, it's just that it's been hyper-focused around the stealing mechanic, with other more damage dealing traits often feeling isolated. The sheer variety when it comes to the stealing mechanic is pretty insane though, as it's evolved from stealing items and equipment through to stealing money, attributes and even abilities, while also being able to deal damage at the same time and steal multiple times or from multiple enemies. But it's perhaps the focus around the steel command that's led to its restriction, as it's ended up becoming a bit of a crutch, and it's only really Final Fantasy XI that showed how their stealth could be used to great effect to deal more damage within a party based setting. Either way, the role of the thief has been pretty important when taking a wider view, and it has still appeared within many, many games, even taking the center stage on the odd occasion. And with that, 
We hope you've enjoyed our take on this evolution. And if you did, please consider giving us a like. As always, be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to influence the types of evolutionary studies we produce in the future, make sure to also check out our Patreon, as supporters get exclusive voting rights on upcoming evolution videos. Alright everyone, with that this is Daryl signing out. I'd like to extend a big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, especially Benjamin Snow, the Livestream, Gregory and Zedorn, who are super special Onion Night supporters, and of course, a big thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more final fantasy goodness.